Uh, my name is Sochil Cabrera. Uh, my name is Nahuatl for flower. So Nahuatl is an indigenous language that is predominantly in um, Central America. So this is the multicultural center where the WRC is located. Okay. Welcome to the space. Um, this is our little sign that shows where our center is located, which is like on this side of the building. We have the Women's Resource Center, and this is where our office is, but um, it's not open all the time because we can't really afford to pay staff to have this place open for a longer period of time. But um, when this space is open, you all can feel free to come inside and hang out and talk to us or take a nap on the couch or anything, really. Okay, so the Women's Resource Center is uh, primarily a safe and brave space for all marginalized people, um, although we do prioritize issues regarding women, uh, particularly women of color, since we know that those are individuals who are more likely targeted under this um, capitalist society, and particularly within the um, boundaries of the HSU um, institution. So um, the center provides a lot of resources such as um, advice, we also provide a space for uh, political and um, spiritual, emotional, and I'd say like liberation, um, because I think that within this institution, you don't obviously have a space for that. And um, with the, the center, we want to build that. We want to build a, a space of community in which individuals are not afraid to speak their minds and fight for advocacy and, and fight for their liberation, whatever that might look like. Um, but beyond that, I feel that we also provide educational resources. We do have a um, Rosa Parks Library, and it's a, it's a library that um, everyone has access to. Um, it's, again, just a bunch of books that people have donated and that the center has bought throughout the years. Um, how that works is basically you come into uh, our center, which is the Women's Research Center, or you can go to the front desk of the Multicultural Center, and we have a sign-in sheet, and all you have to do is write your name, and if you are a student, you write your student ID and um, the name of the book that you're going to check out. Um, you can check it out for as long as you want to, just as long as you bring it back before the um, end of the um, school year ends. But if you do need to use it for a longer time, that's fine. You can just sign it off again and then take it back with you. And uh, those books are primarily for students, but not limited to students. So meaning that if you are a member of the community and you want to come visit the library and use a couple of books, that's totally fine. I feel like the Women's Center is mainly known for Take Back the Night, which is an event that's hosted every spring. And it's a space for, um, for women who have been survivors or victims of sexual assault to reclaim the night is what we call it to take back the night um, and we do host like workshops regarding on like they vary they change year to year depending on who's organizing but what something that does stay consistently is the um the speak out and it's a space where um people who have been victims and survivors can go up to the mic and speak about it and it's a space where we don't judge you and it's you know for you to speak out and, and everything that is talked about during that space stays within that space um, we also do a walk through the uh, from HSU to the Arcata Plaza, and that's just to reclaim the night. Meaning that um, because statistics show that women are predominantly um, harassed in the night, um, we want to take that back. And it's like a march where all women um, can have the opportunity to do that. Resources, uh, materialistically speaking, we do provide a lot of menstrual gear, meaning tampons, pads. We do have diva cups and everything that you need. Um, you know when you are menstruating. We also provide heating pads, and those are like electric like pads, that, patches that you use for, um, when you have cramps. And we do have a lot of tea and coffee. Um, we do have access to the library, you know, like I mentioned previously. But aside from that, I feel like we do provide a lot of support, not only for survivors and victims, but just people who feel like they need to, their voices to be heard and don't feel safe going to administration to talk about these issues. So we are here for that and we're not managed reporters so we don't have to um, mention anything that you say to us if you don't want us to. We do host King Kong Campus and that's usually in the fall and that's a space where um, you can learn about safe sex and just kinky stuff if you're into that and if you're not you can learn about it um, and obviously you learn about consent as well because everything that you do with like your significant other has to be consensual. Um, so we do that event and then we also started doing books and breakfast which is uh, a 
a program that's designed to introduce children to other textbooks that are outside of the academic setting. Um, so we try to do a lot of, um, we try to integrate a lot of cultural books that are often bilingual and represent other identities um, more than what we usually see, which is white folks. Um, there's that, and then we've also been doing uh, a moon cycle workshop slash DIY pad workshop and um, that basically entitles like making your own pads and learning about um, alternatives to just using pads and tampons and also how you can track your moon cycle you know and it kind of goes back to the feeling of women being more connected to the earth and you know being more intact with our environment. Matrix is typically a zine of just pictures, poetry, drawings, a bunch of stuff that you want to put into it. Anybody who is a student or community member can um, enter submissions and we will publish them in a, it's basically like a book. And um, if you have anything that you want to include in it, we can add that to the matrix and then that gets published at the end of the year. And then we provide those for free to anybody who, who would like one. So my position is the staff coordinator and also the fiscal. So I am, um, if we look at it through the the manual for AS is supposed to be the liaison between um, the Women's Resource Center and AS and administration. Um, I do do that, but aside from that, I also just put myself in a position to be of service to the rest of the staff and the rest of the community, uh, meaning that I will be there to help with any tasks that they need help with, um, whether it be just running errands, making copies, um, reserving rooms, or anything that the staff needs me to do, I will do that. So I feel like the center is, goes beyond just providing resources for your menstruation and free books. I think that again, it's a space for empowerment and I feel like if this space can be used for anything, it's for that. And I think that, that if, if, you, if there's every, anything that you wanna say and that you don't feel comfortable saying outside of the university, this is the space to do so. I think that, um, yeah, we're definitely more, more, than, more than just bleeding human beings. I think that we're, we're, we're political, our bodies are very political and I think that people don't, usually see us as as, 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 as as people that can achieve things other than things that are restricted to women. So I feel like we can do more than, than what people expect us to do. And we, I think we, we can do that. We can continue to do that. And we will continue to show not just administration, but other people who um, typically like marginalize women that, um, that we are more than, than what they think we are. Aside from my position with just the fiscal and staff coordinator, we do have an anti-racism educator. We also have a community outreach coordinator. We also have a the matrix and publicity coordinator, as well as the environmental justice educator and health and body politics educator as well. I hope that the center um, can work to achieve anything that they want to achieve. For me personally, that's political awareness and liberation for marginalized communities, um, whether it mean like, you know, having to go against what the administration wants you to do. I feel like that's something that we are restricted to doing, but I think that we are empowered and with each other, like with our community, having each other's back, we can definitely achieve that. So for me, that would be a dream to see that happen. Our email is hsuwomen at gmail.com. Um, we do also have a Facebook page and an Instagram. And again, that's just hsuwomen at humble.edu. Whatever you do, just always have a good intention to represent who you are and liberate yourself through whatever it is that you're doing.